Hi guys, welcome back to the Sports with Mono and Mono. I'm here with Steve with Smack Dad in the middle of summer, and it's going to be hot as the devil on this side of the country. So, um, welcome. I'm here with my partner Steve, as as always. Hey, welcome back to the show. We used to uh, be talking sports. Can't wait. It's we my got, favorite time of the week. And we got a lot, a lot of cover. So, yep. Let's get to it. So listen, see, uh, it, it is, it's going to be unprecedented heat for the next few days on this side of the, the country, from the Midwest in, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It's only going to be 103 in Arizona, so you know, put that into perspective, right? But there's a lot of stuff we want to talk about today um, from a sports perspective. Things are happening. Games are going to start, right? Well, when do you want to start? Well, NFL, well, Major League Baseball, well, less, than a, start? Well, less than a week away, actually. there's uh, The Yankees and Mets are doing an exhibition game tonight. Yeah. Opening day for baseball is Thursday, Scherzer versus Cole, and on and on. So, you know, hopefully the wait is over. Cole gave up two home runs in the inter-squad scrimmage. Should we be concerned? No, it's an inter-squad scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but should we be, uh, you know, I, I, concerned I, I, about Jacob Degrom, who only pitched one inning, and now you know? Well, the only thing you would be concerned about is your standard baseball injuries. Right. Right. I mean, let's be real. But it, it's DJ LeMay, who's been quarantined for fourteen games, right. you know, fourteen days. Right. So, you know, right. Is that going to affect him hitting three twenty? That's again? why they got the disabled list. It's, right. It's going to be no different than uh, any other. That's right. Season other than playing 60 games. So what is it, a week from today, that baseball? Major League Open, baseball? Opening day is Thursday, <laughs> right. the, the 23rd. 60-game season, right? We talked about it. And again, it's a tournament. And, and again, it, it's all dependent upon if this corona thing uh, doesn't you know, spread like wildfire again. Which it is, and which is why I want to talk about sports coming back in general, okay. right? The NBA, the bubble. Let's talk about the bubble, right? Right. Florida is one of the most, you know, hottest spots in the country for coronavirus, and these guys are living like royalty. And everyone says, "Oh, but they can't leave their hotel. They, you know, they have to order in you know, baloney." These guys are partying it up like nobody's business, and. I, I may be I may be changing my tune because I didn't realize how bad I didn't think this coronavirus was going to last this long, right? So going down to Florida, they thought this was the safest spot on earth, right? Playing in Walt Disney, right? Corona doesn't get Walt Disney, right? And now they're down there. It's a hot spot in the country. Coronavirus cases are up left and right, and these guys are going to play basketball, and. I was looking at some of the footage of these guys practicing. You know, you know what basketball is. You, you you got your face nose to nose with this guy, right? And and we're mandating masks across the country and so forth. So I'm trying to tie in social issues or current you know pandemic concerns with the NBA. Should this? And I'm starting to say maybe maybe we shouldn't be playing this if it's that bad. Maybe. Well, I, well, outside it's bad. I mean, this bubble thing. They're taking all the precautions, meaning they're testing guys, they're quarantined. For example, you, you mentioned they're ordering food. You know, one, one of the dopier NBA players, I think they forget his name now. Right, stepped out to pick up uh, yeah, his, his, his quote-unquote uh, you know, delivery of food. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. But anyway. Right, named uh, Alice and Mary and Susan uh, and you know, whatever. Right. Okay. Exactly. But the point is... He gets quarantined. You know, I think it's a four-day thing if you violate. What if you step out? If you go into the Magic Kingdom, you get uh, yeah, a three day. Yeah, you, know, you can draw the the white uh, chalk line if you step over it. And but the rules are in place. I got it. I, I think because it's in this bubble environment, every precaution is being taken. Does that mean? Yeah, you know, people. No, are, no. That, that's my point. Saying you know, you're in Florida. I mean, you know what? Corona doesn't infiltrate Walt Disney World. Well, because it's the funnest place on earth. No. Believe me, these guys are having fun. Listen, Walt Disney World actually opened to the general public last week. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> so the Great Adventure in New Jersey. Well, I mean, right? the thing about you know Walt Disney World is you know 
Do you think they're not selling Mickey masks and uh, and everything of else? And on they, and on. So. They're making a ton of money. I, I get it. Yeah. You brought it up before. Does does the money matter? Yes, it matters. It does. And I'm going to give you that kudo the whole time. So the know. NBA is going to start. Uh, I guess you know. I mean, the time is flying. So they're they're about two weeks out. Right. And uh, you know the NHL. Uh, That's happening. Yeah. I mean there was uh, some. Uh, uh, a big storm in, in Edmonton, so there's two sites: Edmonton for the West and Toronto for the East. Right. But they'll they'll fix that, and the NHL, for the hockey tournament, and, and, the, and the NHL will be ready to go. So we're ready. Training camp is going to open for the NFL. So far, and they're still working out the protocols on testing and things like that. But again, for the 800th time. It is what it is. Yeah. And, and you have to adjust. But I know. I just think the long wait is over. Because the reason I brought that up is we, we're talking about whether, you know, college and high school football should be played and so forth. And, you know, it's still up in the air. I think you got more insight on the on the high school side of things, which yeah. bring that up. Right. I'm, so for, for New Jersey, an announcement came two, two days, 48 hours ago or so, that they're not going to crown state champions, meaning for football, practice was supposed to start, say, August 10th. Right. That has been pushed now to September 14th, something right. along those lines. So they're cutting the schedule down. Yeah, the right. season won't start until early October, right. and it's only going to be a six-game schedule. As of now, I'm, I, I still believe that there's a, a, a more than puncher's chance that they're just going to, they may cancel the whole shebang, and that's going to come, obviously, from uh, the government and so on, the health officials, etc. But... Okay. You know, it, it, it's disappointing. They're not going to crown any state champions, and uh, let's just hope, you know, again, some the seniors get to, to uh, play their senior year. And it, we're bringing this up because, you know, like I said, you know, the, the high school football season in New Jersey is unbelievable, right? It's just marquee games and, you know, quality football players across the country. But that's uh, the reason I brought up the NBA. You know, they're going to be playing – you know what? How many games are the NBA going to be playing? I don't know, forty maybe something, right? But again, you know, should, if if you're going to play that, don't don't you play high school football without compromising something? That, that my whole my whole opinion has changed. Well, the difference, I uh, yeah, again, it's the bubble. The NBA is in a bubble. High school football, a bubble in Florida. But your point about playing basketball and obviously you're guarding and you you. You're hitting back and forth and so on. Sweat and flying all sure. over the place. But in football, you know, your yeah. offensive and defensive line, <laughs> these guys literally are, are, are face-to-face every single play. Right. right. So both face masks are going to hit each other, <laughs> Yep. so on and so forth. So that's a consideration. Again, it's to be determined, but... But I'm looking, listen, I'm, I'm I can't f- wait. I can't wait. I'm all that's for, it. you know, high school football and things resuming, but if... If this pandemic is worse than we even thought, then maybe we just take a break and, and, and start it off next year. I know there's going to be ramifications across the board, right? Not only money, but we talked about it before. Young kids, you know, wanting to put on, put on a show and this is their marquee time. Determines where they're going to go to college and play Division One, II, two, three sports, right? Right. It's, it's wild. And, and just to encapsulate everything, it was funny. I, I may have said this on the other, on the show we just uh, did last week or so. Uh, I was in a it was in a store and I saw a guy walk in with a t-shirt, best t-shirt of the year, 2020 sucks. <laughs> <No one's laughs> I went up to him. I said, I got to commend you. <laughs> Where do I buy that? <laughs> It's like Forrest Gump, with, you know, with the smiley face. Hey, yeah, now nah, you're a big Forrest with mud, guy with the mud. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you know, we, we talk about, like I said, you know, what's on the table: high school football and and college football, right? So they were talking about, you know, Ivy League's already canceled the whole season, right? So they're not playing any football, and. One thing came up, and I thought it was interesting, because you and I haven't missed one of these games in, you know, what, 45 years, something? But I know we, I know we Army, we, Navy game, you know. But they are going to play. I mean, we talked about the conferences. It's only in conference. We talked last week about more key games being, 
you know, canceled, like whatever, USC, Notre Dame, for Oklahoma, example. Texas, we can go on for we weeks. We can go right? on and on. But to your point, and why don't you finish, Army, Navy. I'm, I'm all for it. Listen, I love it. You know, Philadelphia, that's where it's been played, what, the last, you know, at least a few years anyway. Yeah, right? Philadelphia. They move it around. Well, yeah, typically it's, a, it's in Philly. <laughs> typically. <laughs> but somebody brought up the point, and I thought, I said, you're right. If we don't play any games, and then you play one game, you know, how many guys, you know, and Army-Navy game, we're talking about our future soldiers here, you know, kind of thing. Right. Right? So if the season gets canceled for Army or Navy, that the, the point is they're going to play this game come hella high water. If I guess. If one game, that's the game. <laughs> I guess. Right. So hopefully it doesn't come to that. But uh, All right, let me put it out there to you right now. Michigan-Ohio State. Is that game going to happen this year in it's football? A con- it, again, it, it's a conference game, so that one would go off if the season okay. goes. Absolutely. Okay. It has to be an in-conference, so that would be like USC, U- UCLA. It would be. But if you played, my point is if you played that game, you know, why didn't you play the week before? I mean, that's either all in or all out. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm starting to wean. I feel like Joe Biden here a little bit. Changing my tune based on the, the social conditions of the world. Again, right? I mean, again, we're at the mercy of uh, of forces that you have no control over. Yep. You know, they're trying to do the best they can. But let's all fa- face it about college football. Like, again, is it about the money? Yeah, it's about the money. Certainly. Okay. I got it. But uh, some leagues have been canceled, like the Patriot League just uh, announced they're not playing. They did. Ivy League we talked about. But the big boys, the SEC... They should be an announcement from them uh, if they're going to go conference only and, and so on and so forth. But are we getting away from this, it's either all or nothing? Why would you play one and not the other, right? Well, I mean, uh, the cardboard cutouts in Shea Stadium. I thought, at, f- at first I thought it was a Saturday Night Live skit. Right. And then I said, that's kind of cute. That's well, actually funny. They're going to pipe in, you know, fake you yeah. know, fake fan noise and so forth. It's all about the money. It's all about the Season money. Season ticket holders who can afford, you know, yep. a $500 ticket, whatever. And, you know, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure the cup cardboard cutout <laughs> isn't four ninety nine <laughs> that you can buy at Walmart. Yeah, cor- <laughs> cardboard cutouts don't buy hot dogs and beers. That's right. right. <laughs> so so they, 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 they factored in that <laughs> price. <laughs> Yeah, cardboard cutout has arrived. It's only six thousand dollars or something. You want sauerkraut on that hot dog? Uh, no thanks. Exactly. Anyway, but listen, no, going round and round on this, we can. The we bottom line is, weeks. it is what it is. But we'll talk about specifics in a second. But first of all, I wanted to say this first segment was sponsored by Coriano Trucking of Haverstraw, New York. Right, yep. loyal supporter of the show, and we certainly thank them. And again. Like all our audience and so forth, we hope everyone's happy and healthy and getting through this tough time. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. So, listen, let's stay with the uh, NFL for one fun one, couple minutes. Well, here. we got a lot to talk about. We do, right? So, there have been some big signings, big money. I guess, you know, I don't know where the money's coming from, but these guys are getting money. The Miles Garrett, the but, Derrick Henrys, the Chris Joneses, they're getting record money now. Well, Miles Garrett's gotten record money. Not Miles. Miles Garrett Miles. will be the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL right now. Really? Yeah. I know, and I, I, I thought that was... I thought some of the guys were making kind of big... Didn't Aaron Donald sign some monstrous contract? He did, but not as much now as Miles Garrett. You know how it works. When, when somebody signs the monster deal two years ago, and the, the next monster deal... Bigger talks. monsters follow. But right. Miles Garrett, obviously famous for you know, the Mason Rudolph incident, served his suspension. All accounts are... This guy's a pretty good player. He is pretty good. So, I must say. We talked about yeah, it. Yeah, but he's got he, to now prove it. Okay. But the so, last time we saw him on a football field, he was assaulting a, a you know a fellow NFL player yeah, with a helmet. I just said Mason Rudolph. Yeah. Incident. So uh, back to Chris Jones now. Chris Jones. We talked about Pat Mahomes' deal. Obviously, you know the ridiculous amount of money there. But we talked about the flexibility of that contract and the ability to sign important pieces to the puzzle for the Chiefs. And Chris Jones is an important piece. This guy's a pretty damn good. Defensive tackle. Very he, good. He played well in the Super Bowl, and uh, 
again, that goes to my point that I, I think the Chiefs are really going to be cr cream of the crop for several years. And I come. get it, but you know, my point bringing these names up and Derrick Henry, you know, right? He's probably making more than Zeke, right? No. No? Derrick Henry's contract is that okay. is actually reasonable. I said corrected. He uh, he signed uh, for fifty million, twenty five is guaranteed. And the reason I'm saying that it's reasonable, because it is, right? Zeke is making more. In fact, Tennessee, believe it or not, gave Chris Johnson nine years ago more money in the contract than what they just resigned Derrick Henry for. Okay. Right? Yeah. So Derrick Henry, obviously, we're huge fans of him. I mean, when you extend a running back like Ezekiel Elliott, I, I don't care who it is. The average shelf of a running back is two and a half years. It exactly. really is. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm think, thinking the same thing. Zeke is one of the cowboy legacies like Emmett and, and all these guys, right? Tony Dorsett. But you're right. Tomorrow morning, he can wake up with a bad back, and that's it. But that's yeah. why, uh, you know, and again, the NFL running backs, this is the, the time of the year. We talked about Melvin Gordon last year. I want to get traded. I'm not <laughs> we were laughing about right. it. So, yeah. so now it's it's Raheem Mostert from uh, the 49ers. I want out. I want more money. It, it, you know, it just it just never stops. This is the time of year they do it. And uh, But Henry, um, I would have rolled the dice. I think Derrick Henry is a freight train. I think he's still mm. 25, 26. Yeah. So I think that's a good signing by Tennessee. But again, back to my point, it's a high risk when you extend a running back. You know, because it, you can find diamonds in the rough in rounds two. They three, come around four, the corner five. every every other week. Exactly. You know? We know that. Exactly. Uh, but it's so funny when they talked about this is the missing piece. You know, like locking up Derrick Henry, and they're talking about Ryan Tannehill. Right? This, and I almost thought about it. I said, wait, is this a Matt Castle kind of thing? Like one great year and, and that's it? No. He was in Miami for five, six years, right? Yeah. He goes to the Tennessee type. Maybe it was the system. Maybe it was something else. He had a great year. Are you All of a sudden, they're putting him in the Johnny Unitas category? Like like he's, he's done something? Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, but the money they're paying. Now, and listen... I, I'm sitting here impartially. I love my little brother, Stephen. Dallas Cowboys, the Dak Prescott thing, right? Yeah. Deadline came and went, didn't sign him. Right. Is that an indication that the Cowboys say he's not our long-term quarterback? Or, you know what? If he wins the Super Bowl this year, great. If he doesn't, we'll pay him $38 million next year. Great. And then we'll make a decision. Well, what do you think? I'm, I'm, well, I'm pros, anxious to hear your Dak Prescott. Well, the pros and cons with Dak are Dak wanted a five-year deal, Cowboys offered four. Right. I think both sides are at fault here. Okay. Now, we're not crying, uh, te shedding tears for Dak Prescott. He's going to make $31 million. Exactly. Okay. Of course. Of course. And let's face it, he was a fourth-round, third-round pick, whatever he is. Yeah. And, and listen, he, he, I think he's only made like... Four million, five million dollars to be the starting quarterback for Dallas Cowboys. He must be starting. That being said, be the detractors on Dak is he doesn't have a you know he can't throw it downfield consistently. So therefore, the defense hasn't uh, won a Super Bowl. So hasn't won a playoff. Game. Also, no. hasn't won a playoff game. Exactly. And, and can I fully blame Dak Prescott for that? Absolutely not. Right. So the other thought I had about this was: Is he the long-term answer? We'll know that next year because if they, as a as a committed Dallas Cowboy fan, is he the long term answer that you want them to sign and pony up? I don't. I I've gone on the record. I'm a Dak fan. Okay. Me too. But I like him. Mike McCarthy is the new head coach. Okay. And if Mike McCarthy may have his sights on somebody, meaning a trade, it could be anything. Okay, it could be the Cowboys are going to be all in next year for Trevor Lawrence. Right, but you're saying there's going to be a lot of teams. Mike McCarthy will. may not think Dak is the long term. Or Mike McCarthy is saying, "I'm going to coach this kid this year. I'll determine." Let me if, see what I got. Whether he's worth thirty eight million. Well, next year. if he's worth a five year deal. Okay. But the downside for the Cowboys is if they didn't get the, the I think they should have got the deal done, but now they're going to have to pay him even. More. But why, okay. why? Why are we barking about a four to a five year deal when you know Patrick Mahomes just signed a ten mil a ten year contract? I mean, 
The guaranteed money is the guaranteed exactly. money. Exactly. So it doesn't matter whether that's, it's four that's or five. A, that's yeah. a great point. So. That's a great point because you can cut them at any time. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's crazy. It's like, like it's almost like there's been no shutdown or effect on the NFL. They're still paying the same crazy contracts. And, yep. you know, the money that people are making in the NFL, unbelievable. And it just continues. And uh, uh, like we talked about it last show, our brother C, uh, Tom brought up that, you know, we're talking about a half a billion dollars for a quarterback. A 10-year contract. It, it, it's, right. I don't know. Again, it's fantasy numbers, but yep. it's crazy. You're right. <clears throat> Listen, while we're on the NFL, I want to talk, uh, bring something up I saw. It was Barry Sanders' 52nd birthday. I thought... I was older than Barry Sanders, but I wasn't. He was awesome. I mean, 52 years old, and again, we've talked about it. We we love sports athletes that excel at their sport and are also like articulate and, and classy and hand the ball to the ref after you score a touchdown. It was awesome, but happy birthday to Barry Sanders because he was great. He yeah. was great. I, mean, I, saw, I saw like 10 minutes of footage of him going... You gotta be kidding me! How did you get out of that and score a touchdown? One of the all-time greats, one of the best uh, character guys in the NFL. Classy beyond belief. Yeah, Barry actually. Sanders is uh, is the real deal. Yep. Happy birthday to him. 52. But let's talk about the elephant in the room: is the the disaster that is <coughs> the Washington Good. fell in the blanks. I'm glad to bring this up because I got a lot of thoughts on it too. So, so uh, you know, obviously the latest. Uh, ridiculous public relations disaster for him is this sexual harassment thing yep. that's been going on for quite some time. Okay. I'll get to Snyder, but I don't want to forget about Bruce Allen. So Bruce Allen, son of George, yep. was the president of the Washington Redskins. And I remember specifically last year before he left his post, ah, the culture here in Washington is great, et cetera, et cetera. It is such a. I really didn't understand the full weight of what a disaster the Redskins have been since Dan Snyder took this over. Right. Right. Yeah. To find out, a, a, again, it's a company. I can't a, wait. To, a billion dollar, two billion. They got to be valued at least. Right. They don't have an HR department. <laughs> I found that to be comical, actually. This is an this comical. Is, this is a hanging curveball for me because I can't wait to talk about it. Right, and, right? And, and and it's not only that; it's the on-field performance. It's the everything from the Albert Hainsworth signing. Whatever. It's ten, been a disaster. Ten years. It's just been an utter, yep. utter disaster. Right. And right. I don't know what else to say other than, of course, Snyder came out with the the standard of uh, things will change, the culture will change. Exactly. exactly. Okay, well, I'm glad you brought this up because, I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm going to bring up something, you know, I was in communication with uh, Jeffrey Bolliger from Connecticut, one okay. of our loyal listeners, right? Yeah. Die hard Washington Redskins fan. Right. So first of all, it came up and I texted Jeff and, you know, I said, you know, now they've succumbed, right? They have to change the name, so the name's going to change, right? And I jokingly said... What's the new name going to be? The Washington Foreskins? <laughs> Good one. Okay. So, you know, whoever wants to rip me off from here, you you, know, you heard it on Sports with Mono, Mono first. And Jeffrey, you know, the class act, he said, yes, it's happening. You know, here's my thoughts, the generals, the monuments. So, you know, but then then this other thing came out with the, uh, the sexual harassment and the environment. Yeah, the culture. And I'm going to... You know, I, I'm trying to keep a fine line between our sports conversations and, and, and a social perspective. I have known about this environment in corporate America forever. Right. I have sat there. I have witnessed it. I heard it. I, I said, I can't believe this is happening. Why isn't this at the forefront now? It's been going... And you just brought it up before. Is there no HR department? Well... Now there's an HR department. But I'm going back 25, 30 years. Sure. I sat there and watched what went on, and I, and I shook my head going, 
How is this even happening? How can you talk to a woman like that? And I swear to God, I've been a proponent of this forever. I'm, I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad it came out. But it's not unique to the Washington Redskins. Mark Cuban's team, you know, it, it, it was prevalent there. But where I used to work, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a 27-year career guy in corporate America, and I saw it, and I'm not going to mention the, you know, where I saw it, but it's more prevalent than ever, but I'm glad it came up, and it's crazy. It, it's like it has to come up now with, with all the social issues going on and the pandemic going on, but this is not new. It's not isolated to the Washington Redskins, but to your point, Steve, yes. Ever since Daniel Snyder took this team over, it's it run a Joe Gibbs and Jack Ken Cook tradition of the Washington Redskins into the ground. Absolutely. It's my thought. Yeah. So, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. You know, the Redskins uh, want to build a new stadium. Right? They're under pressure to change the name. Or else FedEx name comes off to say, fine, go ahead. Right. Take it off. Right. So, but, they, but here's changing. the other point I want to make, too, about the Redskins, yep. which I find uh, crazy. Not only do they have an HR department, they hire Ron Rivera as their head coach. Right. Ron Rivera, is, 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 his reputation is impeccable. Yep. We remember Ron Rivera. He's a player for the Bears. I remember him. He played at Cal. Um, the Bears. He was linebacker in the 85 Bears. Good coach. He has his hand, he, he gets let go by the Panthers, or they decide to. He was like 85 there. He was. And um, he has the pick of the litter of, of any job that, that was open at the time. Right. So my point is, Ron Rivera, what do you think he's thinking? What am I walking into? No, he think? knows now what he walked into. So here he is. All I read in the news is, well, Ron Rivera is, is involved with the name change. Ron Rivera is involved with changing the logo. Ron Rivera, and, and it's, it's insane. Is it not? It's insane. It's insane. Okay. I brought it up. It's insane. It was worth talking about, you know. And Ron Rivera's daughter works uh, for the Washington Redskins, and his statement was, I can guarantee you, <laughs> going forward, <laughs> it stops. <laughs> and God help anybody that Listen. even says that. You know what I mean. But I just find it to the point of Dan Snyder, how ridiculous the management of the Washington Red or lack thereof of the Washington Red. Right, but is is the social, you know, thought going, you know, you're gonna pull pull the you know, gonna force him like Sterling and, and the NBA to sell the team because he what? he wouldn't give up the logo, wouldn't give up the name. But that's a good point. So <laughs> Donald Sterling, we was supposed to shed a tear for Donald Sterling. <laughs> Three billion dollars. They they gave him a check from Bomber who uh, bought 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 the Clippers. Right now, now what, what Sterling said and obviously was appalling, etc. etc. Agreed. And shedding a tear for Donald Sterling. Not a second. Got a check for three billion dollars. You got when, it. And God knows what he, he bought the Los Angeles Clippers for. Right. I got it. Right, a cup yeah. of coffee probably. I'm just wondering if it's the same kind of thing. Are they going to force Daniel Snyder to sell the Washington Redskins? He is not going to sell the Washington Redskins. But would would uh, Roger and the boys <laughs> on Park Ave <laughs> be happy if uh, you know the, somebody else came in and, and bought the team? All right. I, absolutely. <laughs> but Snyder is not selling the team. Exactly. But yeah, here's a little tidbit I'll throw in. I heard the Edmonton Eskimos, that's a good Canadian one. football team, uh, a football league, are changing their name. And I ask people, isn't that an honor? Yeah, isn't it a, isn't it a good thing? Is it all of a sudden we we called you Eskimos, so now it's bad? No. So so here's here's the deal with that. So the Edmonton Eskimos, yep. reached out to the. <laughs> Eskimos. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the same thing. They're, they're like, 90% of them said, this is not offensive, this is not offensive, you know, blah, blah, blah. Which they did with the Redskins yep. years ago. They threw a thing out to the Indian yep. nation and they said, hey, we don't have no problem with this. It's the exact same thing. So right. Canada, and this was about three weeks ago, yep. where Edmonton said, hey, we reached out to the, you know, the Eskimos and, and we're going to keep the name Eskimos. Yep. Okay? And guess what? Their top sponsor, 
right. would, would pull the support. He yeah, said, right. if you don't change the name, yep. we're gone. Yep. And here we are. They're yep. no longer going to be the Edmonton <laughs> Eskimos. I, I just... Uh, I, I, we I'll, talked I'll, about it, the I'll Cowboys say, and I'll the Rangers. Say, and I'll just say I would think. I mean, really, it's a case-by-case case basis, but it sure is. There, there, there's some really uh, right. silly things, and, I th- and I'm going to put the changing the Edmonton Eskimos name. All right. Well, let's 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 in, in the discussion of a little a little over the top. Let's do a sports with mono and mono question for Jim and Steve. Right. Sure. We're, we're going to get one guess. And we'd love for all our other listeners out there to say, what do you think the name team should be? You know, what should the Washington Redskins now become? I'm going to say, um, there's two, two that I like, but if I got to pick one, my initial thought was the monuments. But now, you know, with the monuments, you know, getting tumbled down, I said, you know what? How about the veterans? I'm good with the veterans. What do you think? That's my pick. It's fine. Like if you go with the monuments, then in two years we'll have to change the name from the monuments. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if you name them the veterans, you'll never have to change it again. I'm here. Right? Uh, again, I, I can't. Uh, I, I don't know what the name's going to be. I'm hearing. Red Tails. I'm hearing Red Tails. Which I have no problem with. Uh, Tuskegee guys. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know awesome. what? I think that's actually. I think that's going to happen. That's my guess. Or the Warriors. Now there is a fan, and he's a big Washington fan. Who oh, trademarked the all of the Well, yeah, he yeah. owns forty-four trademarks. Glad you brought that up. And you know what he told Snyder? <laughs> I give it to you for free, <laughs> right? <coughs> you know, free what I mean? beers at every every Red Tails game yeah. I go to, or but whatever, yeah, right? Whatever. Yeah. But the point is, I yeah. think the Red Tails is probably the leading candidate. That's okay. my guess. Right. I'm just and saying. again, for people that don't know, you referenced it. It's the honor that the Tuskegee Airmen were, you know, the African American pilots that were absolute heroes in, in defending. Um, the no United question States. about it. So I'm, I'm good. I'm just saying, if we had to pick one, I'm going with the veterans. Who are you going with? So if they go with the Red Tails, then I guess that, what does that mean? The Ku Klux Klan, then that will start protesting outside. <laughs> well, or the Audubon Society. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> the Audubon Society with their binoculars and holding a, <laughs> you know, picket sign. <laughs> right, what about the? You know, <laughs> is that a spruce? Uh, <laughs> yellow-bellied sapsucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a yellow-bellied. How, no how could you possibly think they would think you saw a bird? We're not supposed to be seeing from three thousand miles from here. <laughs> That's a honeymooners reference. Yes, it is. But listen, I, we would love to, to hear from you, uh, our audience, and say, you know, who do you think, you know, what the name sh- change should be, or whatever, or who do you think the leading candidate is? But of course, we'll we'll fess up next week if uh, they name it and it's not the veterans and but he's going with the Red I'm Tails. I'm going Red Tails, and the Redskins are supposedly keeping the uh, same uh, team colors. Team colors, right? But listen, you know, so we, we covered a lot of that stuff, and I just want to mention that our, you know, that previous segment was sponsored by Lynch Motors of Manchester, Connecticut. Right. And uh, I talked to Mike, you know, text Mike regularly. He's always listening to the show and great supporter of the show, and we love it. Yep. So listen, we're getting down to the wire here, Steve, but there's a topic I wanted to bring up regarding, um, you know, the pandemic and, you know, who should play, who shouldn't play. And, and it's, it's an athlete that you and I have talked about on the show previously. Because we saw a special on Real Sports with her, Elena Deladon. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, great. Right? I mean... She's a great one. She's a great person. Great, great person and an unbelievable... I, I watched some footage, you know, clips of her. Yeah. I mean, she's going into the paint. There's five, five girls on her and, she's, and she yeah. sinks every one of them. Yeah, she, she's, she's great. She's yeah, she, awesome. Yeah, she has a special needs sister for, for the audience. That, Which is almost heartbreaking. If you haven't seen the, you know, YouTube and old yeah. sports I thing. mean, her sister, unfortunately, is literally like Helen Keller. Right. Type of thing. Right. right. Can't see, can't hear, can't, you know. And, and you talk about a loving sister who... Who's turned her world upside down <laughs> and, and orchestrated her entire career to make sure she was there for her. Yes. And, and, and I love it. I mean, so I, so I think she, I think what you're leading to is, 
I am. She's got Lyme disease. Yep. And, and she gets denied an accept, you know, this exception to. Well, the not WNBA play. board says, right. you know, we deny your claim that you're, you know, you you're more vulnerable than the next person. Right. right? Exactly. That. So, I, I I think it's a little unfair. I think uh, Elena, she's a reigning MVP. <laughs> of the net of the you know the, the championship yeah. Uh, yeah. team yeah and uh, she's awesome I mean she's yeah. just absolutely awesome and yeah. an unbelievable basketball player and, and a better person but you know what kudos to the Washington Mystics who said you know what we're gonna we'll pay you yeah. we get it maybe the league doesn't get it but we get it right. so that's the whole thing with the league and the players right we talked about it in baseball and so forth but. We support her 100%, and she's awesome and, and, you know, one of the best players in the league. We do. Yep. So, listen, before we um, start wrapping up here, there's something I wanted to bring up because, you know, when we see things that happen in, you know, sports history, that's what we're all about, sports history. (coughs) Joe DiMaggio this week. Yeah. Got a base hit in his, you know, 56th. Consecutive game. That's right. <laughs> you know, a milestone which, you know, we thought the Babe Ruth home run thing would never be broken, and we thought this and that. This, I'm going to stand. You know, cement shoes. But I'm glad you brought. Never going to bring it up. Ne- never going to be broken. I'm glad you brought it up. I think he went 0 for three yep. on that day, but he hit a screamer <laughs> down the down the third base line against the Indians, and a guy named Ken Keltner made a. You know, Brooks Robinson, like, ridiculous Good snag reference. through and, and, you know, got DiMaggio out by half a step or something, right? Right. But the other thing I think a lot of people don't realize is he then went on a 16-game hitting streak <laughs> yeah, right after. So, exactly. essentially, 72 out of 73 games right. he hit. And, and his numbers were off the charts. <laughs> and in fact, if I remember correctly, I think it's the same year Ted Williams uh, hit 400. 1941. That's right. And Joe DiMaggio won the MVP, not Ted Williams. Right. Last guy to hit 400. That's right. But you know what You know what amazed me about that? When you put this into perspective about baseball players we see today, right? Home run hitters kind of thing. You know how many times Joe DiMaggio struck out in 1941 and I'm guessing, I, you know, I don't know for sure. Four or five hundred at back. How many times do you think? Take a guess. Probably on my hand. I would Thirteen th- times he right. struck out in that season. Isn't that unbelievable? Thirteen times in four or five hundred plate appearances? Oh, my God. I, I played a doubleheader in softball and I struck out 13 times. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know if you're kidding or not, but you know. <laughs> well, nobody will have another answer. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> but I, I wanted to put that little it, tidbit it, up. It's know? an amazing feat. It is. So listen, a um, couple other things going on. Tiger Woods is at the Memorial, right? right. No fans. Twenty-eight to one on this whatever scam, FanDuel or DraftKings online. Twenty-eight to one. He barely made the cut yesterday. Struggling today. But the Memorial is also, is an awesome golf tournament, and there there they are, the young guns. The one guy I keep saying, you know, Tony Fee now. I've been pumping him up for years, right? Right. Awesome, top of the top of the leaderboard. Yep. With and Ryan, John Rahm. Yeah. So Ryan Palmer and Fee now are leading at nine under. Right. John Rahm is at eight. Luke List six and Chiz Revy. Right. Revy. So again, now we're in this new phase of golf. With these are the young guns, right? The Fowlers and the Speeds and Thomases. They're no longer the young guns, right? You got these other guys on the heel. But Tony Fee now has been a guy I've talked about on the show for forever. He's he's poised to get his first major. Right. I mean, this year may not be the, you know, you know, the judgment of it, year. you know, kind of thing. But. Um, He's awesome. It's great. I'm watching it. It's been on the Golf Channel, yeah, which is cool, right? Because you know we're always on Sundays and looking at the final rounds. But Golf Channel's been calling him a absolutely kind of a good kudo. Yeah, doing a great job too. Good coverage. And also before we sign off, today is the Haskell Invitational. 
Correct. Down at Monmouth Park. Yes. Which is something that you and I are, you know, very familiar with. And, uh, you know, it's happening. Again, I don't know if there's fans down there. Our father used to worship, you know, going to the Haskell on that day. It was fun. It's a beautiful place. One of the yeah. great tracks. And, you know, what made me think about that, you know what this was this past week? Wow. Opening day at Saratoga for the summer meet, right? And? Which is... <laughs> is it open? It's open. No fans. Ugh. So I talked to one of our uh, loyal listeners, Jay Costello, resident of Saratoga, New York, and so forth. And uh, <laughs> it's not Saratoga like you, you would expect it, but it's still Saratoga. Sure. Quarantine, cool. you got to wear masks. You know, they, they talk about, where, you know, jockeys couldn't, couldn't run. And when we talk about the Saratoga summer... You're talking about the best jockeys in the world, the best horses in the world. So it's a little different this year, but it was opening day. And I, you got to watch this uh, on the horse racing channel at Lafitte Pincai. Remember him? Of course. Remember him as a jockey? Yes. Very articulate, very knowledgeable. It's awesome. Yeah. I think it's TVG. I think that's the channel. Okay. But it, it's awesome, but couldn't, couldn't possibly move on and, and, and talk about it on, on our show that it wasn't the opening of Saratoga. Cause, you know, yeah. Fans or no fans, it's still awesome. It's still a... Uh, uh, yep. So, Steve, you know... Sport we Sport of Kings is what I was trying to... Uh, I know, say. and we've talked about some of the downsides of the Sport of Kings. Uh, that was, you know, behind the curtain, you know, really... Well, let's leave on a high note on, on the good side of the Sport of Kings because right. the bad side is... Uh, not so, not so good. You got it, but you know the racing up in Saratoga. Like I said, if you haven't been there, go there. It's awesome. And I wanted to just shift gears real quick, back to uh, the college sports. So with the pandemic and everything, and school and and so on and so forth. And I'm not crying a river of tears for any university when it comes to revenue, especially the big football factories. Yep. Okay, but I'm talking about the everyday employees of a college from the maintenance guys to the yep. secretaries to uh, the behind the scenes guys they, right so they make it work people have been furloughed people budget cuts everything and, and so on and so forth so I don't know if you saw this but I was taken aback a little bit a little disappointed in a couple of the names so the most highly paid football coach college football right Nick now, Saban is Dabo Sweeney okay Nine point three mil. Okay, well, Nick Saban can't be no, farther behind. My point is, no pay cut. Got it. Saban, eight point nine, no pay cut. Got it. Jim, Jimbo Fisher, who obviously <laughs> we ain't surprised one bit. Boy, yeah. seven point five, no pay cut. I'm not gonna give you the whole list. Got it. Kirby Smart, six point nine. Right. Now, on the flip side, who has? It's really only two names. And I bashed Jim Harbaugh from a coaching perspective, 0 and 6 Michigan, this, that, and the other thing. He has his critique, you know, we, we know everything about Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, we got a lot of But I'll give him credit. He, he took a, a, a pay cut, but at least it's something. And Lincoln Riley okay. is the other one. Don't get me wrong. I'm not okay. saying, you know. They're not starving. Not at all. Got but it. the point is, right? Good gesture. I find that, John, and, and in basketball, of course, uh, John Calipari is making it. <laughs> yeah, but John's gonna do a foundation with of him. course. Uh, and it may, really, I community mean, service. Oh my God. God. But I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. And then, of course, the other sad news this week is uh, Aaron Rodgers and Danica Patrick, of course, uh, breaking up after two years. Oh, I, I thought for sure that was gonna be a long term <laughs> relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but our last segment was uh, sponsored uh, with De Filippi's Bakery in Monticello, New York, led by Carmela. Yep. And uh, she's doing a wonderful job uh, giving back to the community, to yep. cooking through COVID and everything. And, and it's uh, an unbelievable bakery. I'm not kidding around. Right. And, you know. and listen, she's got a full uh, full plate of things that she's doing. And uh, we just wanted to thank her for her obviously loyal support from the moment we started broadcasting. You bet. Okay. Awesome sponsor. And listen, so we always, we kind of end up, you know, our, our notable passing segment. And I'm going to bring this up because from a sports perspective, there wasn't any, you know, significant ones that we knew about. 
But there was one today, and it was John Lewis, right, congressman from from Georgia, right. And you know, like I said, you know, he he's, he goes back to the '60s over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, took a beating. It was crazy the times that we saw. I'm not sure why the momentum didn't carry from that event forward. But um, he died today at 80, you know, very influential member of Congress and so forth. And you know what? He was, he was actually a decent guy and, and his causes were right. Yeah. Didn't well, agree with his political views on a lot of things. But you know what? He deserves to be recognized even on the show. And, yeah, sure. You know. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah, then, 80 years old. And then uh, one kind of just happened today around... So nothing, the guy David Lewis, he was an ex-USC Trojan, and he actually played on the... Yeah, I saw that. I think it was an original Buccaneer, but yeah, played for uh, John McKay. Do we sell him in uh, Leroy Selman days? Yeah, right. for the box. Right. And uh, he actually played, a, uh, you know, the USC, I think, uh, beat Notre Dame in the 74 National Championship game. He had yep. a big, big, uh, I saw that, big yeah. contribution. Yep. And... Uh, Tony Taylor, um, yeah, from the uh, former Philadelphia Philly, in like '85 or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So those those uh, two uh, from the sports world. Yep. Right. And uh, I got one shout out to right. our most loyal listener, one of them, Mr. James Walsh, once again, who leads the league in shout outs. Uh, <laughs> sports of mano a mano. Exactly. And, and, and where are you, Tony? And, and you emails. Uh, you bet. You know, so we appreciate you, but. I talked to Jim uh, a day or so ago, and uh, today is his uh, him and his wife's 38th wedding anniversary. Oh, look at that. And I wanted to shout out. And, and they said, said it wouldn't last. And they right? said it wouldn't last. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's actually nice to hear a story, a story like that. You uh, bet. That, you know, 38 years, they, they've raised a great family, and uh, Jim's going to be a grandfather. Absolutely. So sure. And Jim, we, we, we loved when you... Send us an email at sports with mono and mono at gmail. It, the insight is great. I'm glad you even Jim chimed in on. Uh, we put, we mentioned Charlie Daniels band last week, yeah. which was great. You know, right. and he brought up some memories. He, he he threw a list of songs that that almost I even forgot, but it was awesome. Right. Thank you, James. But listen, thanks for joining us, everybody. And right. one other thing. I'm oh, bring up. hold on. Breaking! Did you see, breaking news? Did you happen to see the uh, GOP Senate runoff <laughs> election in Alabama with Tommy Tuberville versus Jeff Sessions? I'm I'm guessing that's where you're going. That's with it. exactly where I'm going. <laughs> Congratulations to Coach Tuberville, with former coach of Auburn. Former football. Coach. He actually got his start under Dennis Erickson. Uh, when Jimmy Johnson left uh, Miami. Oh, okay. Listen, Jeff Sessions, <laughs> uh, career politician, former attorney general, obviously him and the president uh, are, are completely at odds. <laughs> but I don't know. I raise an eyebrow sometimes when I was surprised. I was surprised he won. He's got no political experience whatsoever. So he, he, he's going to face the Democrat in November. Doug Jones or something? I think, I think. so. Yeah. But um, the, it's it's the state of the country. That it is. Jeff Sessions, who basically you know, was a senator for 720 oh, years. Oh, and I, I think his father was a right. big-time politician. But I wanted to bring that up. That, yeah. uh, and by the way, Kate McKinnon on Saturday Night Live did a brilliant Jeff, Jeff Sessions. Sessions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the way. So. All right. Well, that's our that's our political thing. You know, right. get out and vote. Right. That's all. It's we can political, but sports related. Yep. Former coach of Auburn, Cincinnati. Tommy so. Tuberville, mm -hmm. <laughs> Senator Tuberville. We'll see. But listen, thanks for joining us, everybody. Steve, of, of course, yeah. you bring up some good things. We could talk for for two weeks here. But we, you know, what we're going to talk about next week is actually some real sports. Yep. So the Yankees uh, go down to uh, Washington and, and, and play the Nationals. Garrett Cole versus Max Scherzer Thursday afternoon. And uh, well, from a baseball perspective, like Ernie Banks said, let's play too. Right. The right. defending World Series champions. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. All, all right. Great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.